Hello everybody, welcome. Yeah, I just had a couple of little pots here. I just wanted to finish off uh, a, a bowl here that I made recently. And um, just a, a narrow footed bowl. And um, I'm just deliberating about how I'm going to what I'm going to do to it, you know, for the, um, I was actually wanting, thinking about doing some faceting with a potato peeler and, um, I've got a couple of pots here, a, a tall bottle over there that I also want to try and do. So I've just trimmed it. It's like leather hard, you know, so. bit of a tight fit on there. Yeah, surprising what you can do, you know, with a potato peeler. And um, this is a potato peeler, as you can see, that's got a handle in line with it. Sometimes a potato peeler, the blade is, so you have to pull down. With this one, I have to cut to the side. I just don't know how successful I'm going to be. And, and with this kind of, what I'm aiming to do is use this to cut, you see, a kind of facet down approximately to there, not right down to the lip, because that would endanger the lip and might make the lip break you see so i've got a little bit of um a little bit of thickness here in the wall and that's something you want to make sure that your pot is thick enough to handle it and it's not a bad idea to practice this on a pot that are a little bit on the thick side so that you get your you know you get a bit of confidence um i'm just going to get something to kneel on because concrete floor, I do not want to need them. Yes, so it's not all that easy to do this actually. Um, and as you can see, I've now you could say, well, why don't you do it this way round, Simon, starting at the top and working down? That would be another way of doing it. Uh, you get a slightly different effect if you turn it around like that and you start at, at there and work down that way. Let's see if we're in the picture. Well, we seem to be, more or less. Maybe I'll just, hang on, let me just zoom this in a touch. And you can see what I'm trying to do. It's, I'll probably grunt and groan rather because uh, it demands actually a certain amount of strength but control as well you see all right so i'm going to start here and now you'll notice the way i've got this i've got the bowl not in the middle because if you're doing that you can't the board here gets in the way when you're cutting so you need to move it like that you see and then you can you can come down and follow through all right so pulling it down oh. ha. <laughs> now the the nature of these kind of facets is that they are a little bit irregular okay it's not like you know the faceting that we do with this guy one of these because when you facet with one of these you can get quite a sharp clean kind of um, finish so pull 
coming down. Now you need also make sure that your your bowl is um, not too soft. You obviously, you don't want it too hard either. So hardness is an important consideration. My dear Watson. Oh, <laughs> come on. Now you notice I'm, instead of doing it all with one hand, I'm bringing in my other hand to take the other end here, you see, to assist. Oh. Now one of the things you have to make sure when you do this kind of work, when you start when you start a facet, you keep going. Don't hesitate. Don't stop. Don't, you know, have a break halfway. When you start the cut, you've got to keep it, just keep it going at the same speed all the way down. You'll develop your own style as you do this, you see. Because we're all different. We've all got a different amount of strength and control. So everybody will do this in a slightly different way. And that's fine. That's good, we like that. Yeah. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. You know, when you cut it and you get it right, you get a, almost like a sheen or a shininess to the surface, which I like. It's a fairly broad facet. It's a fascinating business. I'll probably probably get two more facets here. Uh -huh. And finally the last one. Well I'll show you. Let's just get that, um, pull back the, the zoom a touch. I want to show you the, the facets a little bit up close. And, um, Talk about that. So, can you see the sheen I was talking about? That shine, you see. When you're getting that shine, you know you're getting it about right. All right. So they're quite broad. It's quite nice. Um, here, it kind of ripped out a piece of the clay. And again, there, you see. Uh, 
some scratch marks here and here. Now, that was because when I was when I was um, those scratch marks there. That's because when I was doing the cut, the tool, as I got down towards the end, the tool was too much in that position there. And you see that little edge there caused that cut. So in order to avoid that, when you cut, keep the facet in the middle of the blade, not over one side like that, but more in the middle like that, you see. That was my error, uh, and I didn't, I didn't see that. Okay, well, um, put the focus back. I need to take my seal and, and seal it. You see, but. It makes, I think it makes for quite a nice, quite a nice result. Um, this is the first one of these that I've done actually for a little while. So, you know, a bit out of practice, a bit rusty. But, you know, with a bit, of, bit more practice, I'll get better, you see. And, um, and that's something, why don't you have a go? Why don't you just throw some bowls, put a foot on it, throw them a little bit, a little bit, uh, a little bit on the thick side to allow, you know, because um, if you do them too thin, you may cut right through or you may deform it in some way. But if you if you're doing it like I was doing it upside down like that, you see, cutting from the shoulder back down to the the rim. Just remember, bring the pot to the edge here, you see, like that, and then you'll be able to cut right not completely to the edge but to there okay folks that's all i wanted to show you i have i have some um i have some uh some of these guys some more of these trim tools um it's actually Somebody gave me a trim tool, and uh, I like the way that it cut. the the actual The actual blade here continues around the corner a little bit here, so it enables you not just to cut here on this face, but also around the corner around here as well, and you can use the corner to dig in and cut as well. Uh, I was given a tool, apparently it was made in Korea. So I got one of my Amish friends to make these up for me. I've got a limited number of them, about 20. So if you're interested, write to me. I'm actually going to put them on the website this time, because last time I didn't put them on the website. But this time I'm going to put them on the website. So if you're interested, uh, go to the website, simonleachpottery.com. And... Um, you might find that one of these trim tools you get on with. I personally prefer them to the loop tools. I like this kind of tool, you know, the tool with the, like the right angle. I've got a lot of these of different kinds and I like them. Um, so it's made of stainless steel. It's fairly sharp. You may in time, like all like all trim tools, you may need to take a, a, a sharpener to them just to, you know, sharpen them up once in a while. Um, but uh, this is a diamond sharpening stick. And um, available everywhere pretty much, I think. Smith's Diamond Combination Sharpener. It does coarse and fine. Okay, folks, that's it. Um, yeah, go to my website. We are, in fact, uploading a new set of 
and more pots were putting up there because the websites got very behind and um, so go there have a look have a look at these trim tools if they take your fancy and um, we're going to have a I think about 30 new pots going up uh, probably in the next 24 hours so check them okay hey good to be with you get out there in the cold turn up the heat <laughs> and here's a good tip here's a good tip for you you know the night before the night before take your clay out of your cold studio and take it upstairs and put it in your living room or somewhere where it's warm and then when you go down to your studio the next time take your clay from your warm house down into your studio because there's nothing worse than freezing cold clay isn't there to knead wedge and to throw with so that's just a good tip about throwing in the winter take your clay indoors the night before that's it folks until very soon Keep practicing. See you soon. Bye-bye.